Hey guys, I don't know if you, I don't know how the lighting is here, but we're in the great outdoors. I have been kind of struggling to find time to film videos because I have a toddler, um, a 13 month old toddler baby. I don't even know what to call him these days. And it seems like life has just gotten pretty busy. And so I feel bad that I haven't been posting as many videos, so I'm very sorry about that. But today I wanted to catch up and chat with you about our 2021 financial goals and just do a check-in. So we're on a walk, have you mounted on my stroller, and we'll see how this goes. So since it is the end of June, now's the perfect time to check in with your overall like annual financial goals. Check in, see how you're doing, see if you're on pace. I actually have my budget template, my monthly budget template, and my annual budget template um, on my Etsy shop. I will leave links to those down below. And if you haven't um, been budgeting yet for this year or checking your like financial goals, highly recommend checking those out. But let's get into it. I did a video at the beginning of this year, end of last year, talking about our goals for the year. So I'll leave a link to that video up above so you can check it out there um, where I talk about the financial goals that we want to accomplish in 2021. So the first goal we had set was to max out our HSA, which is a health savings account. You can have a health savings account when you have a high deductible health plan. And at that time, Jacob, my husband, was actually working for a different employer and we were on the high deductible health plan, so we were planning to do the HSA. <clears throat> I love the HSA because it has a triple tax advantage. You put money in tax-free, you can invest those dollars, it can grow tax-free, and then you take the money out tax-free to be used on health, Ugh, there's some animal in the bush, okay. <laughs> you take the money out tax-free to be used on health-related expenses. So we wanted to max that out because we know we'd use it at some point. So, I will say we did actually max this out and this was a big whoopsie for 2021. We ended up maxing out the HSA at the beginning of the year to have it like taken care of. And then my husband Jacob ended up switching employers and the new employer only had a PPO health plan option. And because of that, we had actually overfunded the HSA. So we had to do this whole runaround thing and go back to the HSA and like take back money out, like to fill out all this paperwork because we had overfunded it because we were no longer on a high deductible health plan. So this was actually a big money fail for us so far in 2021. So we had to take out the portion of the HSA that we weren't on the high deductible health plan. So we had to figure that out before like tax time it ended up being a huge mistake. So we did actually max it out, but we, I ended up having a whoopsie with that because we had actually overfunded the HSA. Um, I'm not a tax professional. This isn't tax advice. So our first financial goal, yeah, we did complete it, but we shouldn't have it ended up being a mistake. Our next financial goal was to max out two Roth IRAs this year. A Roth IRA for 2021, you can fund $6,000 to max it out. So we could do two of those, one for myself, one for my husband, Jacob. And we did end up maxing out two Roth IRAs. And we actually did this first thing in January. So we did it like as soon as possible. Now we are still investing in like 401ks. And so that comes out like every month with our paycheck. Sorry for the backlighting there. Um, but we decided for the Roth IRAs to just max them out at the beginning of the year in January. And I get this question often, we are planning to do the same thing for 2022. So we currently actually aren't putting money aside for the Roth IRAs, but um, my plan is to actually just take money out of the emergency fund and use that to max out the Roth IRAs in January because you can actually take contributions out of your Roth IRA without paying any taxes or penalties. So I'm kind of viewing that as like an emergency emergency fund. Like we technically could pull those dollars if we absolutely needed to. No, I do not want to, but it is there in like a dire situation. So I feel okay with moving dollars over to our Roth IRAs at the beginning of January because from our emergency fund because we could potentially use those dollars in an emergency if we needed. That being said, our goal, like once we hit January 2022 and we moved $12,000 over to the Roth IRAs, I then will want to replenish our emergency fund as soon as possible. And I think we could do that within the first few months of the year. So all that to be said, yes, we did fully fund our Roth IRAs in January. 
we're planning to do that again in 2022 again not financial advice not investment advice just what we are doing and yeah i'm glad that we have that big goal checked off and complete our next financial goal also goes along with investing we had a goal to invest at least 15 percent of our gross household income into retirement and i'm happy to report that we have in fact done that like we're on track um year to date we've actually contributed 22 percent into retirement but i know that that's kind of skewed because we fully funded our Roth IRAs on the front end, but I'm on track, therefore, to do 15% of annual income um, into retirement, which the investment vehicles that we're using to do that are a Roth IRAs and a 401k and a 403b. And we're actually on track to be able to max out Jacob's 401k through his employer this year, which is also pretty exciting. Our next financial goal for this year was to make extra principal payments to our mortgage and drop PMI. Sorry, I have them all listed here on my phone. And this was another thing that we were able to accomplish so far this year. We were able to drop PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, in May of 2021 this year. So we bought our house in September of 2019 and we only put 5% down, which meant that we had to pay PMI because we didn't have 20%. And it was a bummer to have PMI. It ended up being about $100 a month, which isn't a ton, but it would just be nice not to have to pay that. So we were paying it for all this time, but because of the crazy market appreciation that we've seen in the last year and a half, um, I actually calculated like what I thought our house value was worth to what our mortgage balance was. I figured that we had about 20% equity. So I was able to contact our um, lender and get the process going to drop PMI. It honestly ended up being a pain because there was some information that they didn't convey to me that I even like asked multiple times that almost made it that we couldn't drop PMI for another two years. But um, luckily we were we were able to do so. Um, yeah, it was it was a bummer. I even like asked questions to them about this like specific thing of like when we could drop PMI and they didn't ever give me like a clear answer. So I know that this is like also, you know, my fault. Like I should have known or like should have read all the fine print and all the things, but um, I was just a little frustrated that like I asked a bunch of questions and it wasn't fully answered. But all that to be said, it did work out. The reason why we were able to then be able to drop PMI was because we have done, are you okay, Pete? Do you need some water and some snacks? So the reason why we were able to have PMI dropped was because we've actually done a kind of remodel of our backyard, which qualified to have them come and look at our house before this like time period window was up, which was like a two year period from when our loan funded. And this is going to be different probably for all different lenders, but this is for our lender of what they did and what they required to be able to um, have this done. So we were able to contact our lender. They then sent out a realtor um, to do a BPO or a broker's price opinion. And so this lady basically came out and she just took a bunch of pictures of our home and then later came back and said how much she thought the house was worth. And then based off of that, less what our mortgage balance was, we ended up having more than 20% equity in our home. So our lender just automatically dropped PMI after that. The cost to do the BPO was 150 bucks. So uh, that was definitely a quick break even. It was like, you know, less than two month break even because we were paying $100 a month in PMI. So that felt really good to be able to have that done. Over the course of our loan for the last year and a half, we've paid an extra $5,000 to principal. And I actually like was starting to like aggressively pay, uh, pay the principal. And then seeing how much the house was appreciating from the market, I was like, hmm, maybe we'll hold off because I'm sure we'll be there sooner. So I actually only, yeah, we only paid $5,000 extra to the principal um, besides just our normal mortgage payment. And then just market appreciation was truly the reason of why we were able to drop PMI. We are not planning to pay extra to our mortgage at this time, um, but we're grateful to have PMI drop. That was like a big goal for this year. Another goal was to continue to put $200 a month into Peter's 529. I don't think I mentioned his name, Peter, but Peter is our 13 month old son. If you are new around here and we contribute every month to his college savings and his 529. So we've continued to do that every month. We also wanted to be able to put $50 a month into his um, other investment account. So we put $50 a month 
into a brokerage account that is technically in our names but the purpose behind it is that we could gift it to Peter someday to help him with things like his first car or like a wedding or like help him with the down payment on a house so for very like future things so we're putting $50 a month into that brokerage account to invest for fun things for him and we are still continuing to do that every month another goal we had was to give 10% and yes we continue to do that um, I don't know if you can hear Peter talking, he's loving this walk. Um, but yes, we continue to give 10% of our income to our church and other missions organizations, which is always important to us. And I, yeah, I'm very like transparent with that. We, you can see that like in our budget report videos that I post as well. Um, yeah, that's just an important thing to us and we've continued to do this year. And the final goal I'd set for us was to be able to go on vacations and we haven't been on a vacation yet, but we have three booked and I'm super excited. Later this year, we're actually going to Hawaii twice. We're going to different islands. And then Jacob and I are also going to be going to Dallas. Um, we are actually scouting out the Dallas area, um, looking to potentially move there. And so we'll see what that entails. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But yes, we do have three vacations booked. I'm super excited. As things are starting to feel a little bit more normal, um, I'm really excited to get traveling and doing more normal things again. I will say at the time of filming this, I live in the state of Oregon um, in Portland and everything is like still shut down. We're like one of the last states still shut down and I have no idea when it's going to open. So that's kind of discouraging, but it's, it's encouraging to see like the rest of the country kind of getting back to normal. Um, and yeah, I think that as far as moving goes, I don't even know if I've talked about it necessarily here on the channel, but I think that we've learned a lot from the pandemic of realizing that like we're more capable of change than we thought. And I never would have thought that we'd ever move. Um, all of our family's here and we really love that. But since the pandemic, we also now, like Jacob, his new job is fully remote, which is so exciting. I love having him full remote and then I work for myself. So we are not now tied to a specific location. So with that and also just the pandemic of like, wow, like we were more capable of change than we thought. We are kind of trying to reevaluate like what we want for our family um, and where we see ourselves. And honestly, I don't know if Portland is where we want to be. And so we're just trying to figure out where we want to go. Texas and Dallas, like there are a few reasons of why we want to have thought of being there cost of living no state income tax i can't believe like how much state income tax to pay in the state of oregon would save us like 15 grand a year if we moved to dallas i know they have high property taxes but so does oregon we pay a lot in property taxes also warmer weather um i love oregon summers i live for oregon summers like the three months a year that we get and i know dallas summers are going to be killer but i think that would also mean that we'd have more like warmer months during the rest of the year whereas in Oregon I totally feel the whole like seasonal depression thing and for about eight months of the year it's really hard for me and so again realizing like why am I doing this like I don't like enjoy the rain and the gloom that we get in the Pacific Northwest and it's like such a high cost of living here as well so we're kind of just reevaluating what we want for our family and I also just like the idea of Texas and just the like lifestyle it seems it seems really awesome and kind of more fits with um, us and what we'd like want for our family. So I don't know, we'll have to, we'll see what happens. Um, but we're just gonna go scout it out, see what we think. Fun fact, I've never actually been to Texas besides the Dallas airport on a like layover. So this is going to be a whole new experience. What I would miss from Oregon, look at this, the trees just everywhere, like can't be beat, the landscape. And of course, I'd miss my family dearly, and I don't know what that would entail, but anyway, just big things that we're thinking of, and I'm sure that maybe some of that will impact our uh, financial goals for next year, because if we do move, I know moving could be very expensive if you move across the country, so we'll have to see. Um, but I, yeah, anyway, I wasn't planning to go on this whole tangent about potentially moving to Dallas, but that is kind of our like little update and things that we're thinking of uh, for this year. So that is our financial goal check-in for 2021. I think that we've been really on track as we've achieved a lot of these financial goals and we've also just been on track with other ones. And so I think that we're gonna, like hopefully if things stay the same, we should be able to finish off this year strong and be able to 
um, continue on with those like investing percentage goals, keep doing at least 15% into retirement while also trying to enjoy our lives a little bit and really looking forward to vacations. I'll be vlogging them so you can um, check those out in like a few months when we um, are able to travel. So we're super excited about it. So let me know in the comments below how your financial goals are going for 2021. Give me a little breakdown, a little check-in. I wanna hear all about it. And also, do you like this random video style? <laughs> for um this budget video i'm sorry that the lighting is like i'm in the shadow half the time and then lighting is better half the time so i apologize for that um but let me know if you are okay with this because it also kind of saves me more time and i feel like i'm able to get more content out to you although again the lighting's not so great and also yes if you've been paying attention i've been walking the same sidewalk back and forth and back and forth because there aren't people here so i didn't want to be a weirdo who was vlogging with other people watching me so anyway i think that's the full update so thanks so much for hanging out and watching this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed and i will look forward to seeing you in the next video bye you didn't even make an appearance in the video can you say hi you say hi say bye bye